For today's lesson, we're going to look at conic sections, and the first conic section we come across are going to be parabolas. And so section 7-1 is going to be split up into a couple days. Part 1 today is going to be all about graphing parabolas. And so the big objectives is to analyze and graph equations of parabolas. And then the second part, which is tomorrow's lesson, is going to be more on this uh, second objective, which is writing the equation of parabolas in standard form. Before we start, we have some vocabulary to talk about. So if we take a look at the first vocabulary word, uh, what is a conic section? Well, it's the intersection of a plane with a double-napped right cone. And it's kind of a weird-shaped object, but you can see it with the image below that we have a upright right or upside-down right cone on top. And then if you notice on the bottom, there's another right cone on the bottom. So it kind of looks like one of those hourglasses that you've seen before. Um, but this shape does create the four conic sections if we slice this in various ways that we talk about throughout chapter 7. And these four conic sections we're looking at is circles, ellipses, parabolas, and hyperbolas. And again, today's focus is going to be mainly looking at that parabola shape when we slice it. So here's what I mean by slicing. So if we got that double napped right cone that you see below, um, if we were to slice it through the base and out the side, as shown in the picture above here, um, when you open up that face, what you're going to be left with is sort of a parabolic shape. So if you go through the base and out the side of one cone, and it could be also true on the bottom as well, uh, but if it goes through the side and through the base, then it automatically be a parabola. If you slice things parallel to the base, um, so cutting it parallel to the base side, if you cut it directly parallel, what you get, in fact, and when you open it up, is going to be a perfect circle cross-section. And so there's the case where you go through two sides and it's per, uh, parallel to the base, that's going to be a circle. If you go through two sides in a diagonal length, so it's not parallel, that's when you sort of get that ellipse shape, so it elongates the circle in one direction or the other. And then the last case is if you slice it sort of through both uh, right cones, both the top one and the bottom one, as seen below, uh, when you slice it this way, this is when you're going to create two sort of branches uh, parabolic branches that look like, and these are called hyperbolas. And so we progress through all four shapes uh, through chapter seven, learning uh, some specific notation, learning the correct equation form of these shapes, and then being able to graph all four of these shapes by hand. So a little bit more on parabolas here. So what a parabola is, is a set of all points that are equidistant from a fixed point that we call the focus and the specific line called the directrix line. And you can kind of see that image below here. So we have that parabola shape that we've seen before in Algebra 2 class or in other previous courses. Um, yes, this is the same parabola that you've graphed before in um, previous classes, but uh, we're going to be looking for a little bit more specific things in pre-calc. So we're going to be looking for you to actually sketch that directrix line down below the parabola and also plotting the focus point within that parabola. And then notice as well, there is also another point we'd like to see, which is that vertex point that you guys are familiar with from before. Um, but this is essentially what a, the, the true definition of a parabola is. Um, we have another definition that you might have heard before, the axis of symmetry, or what we call the line of symmetry. We'd also just like to see you sketch that, and that's the line that goes directly through the focus and vertex, basically splitting the parabola into two even parts. And the last one is that vertex point. Um, where it does go through the axis of symmetry. Um, the vertex point is kind of a good starting point when we start graphing these is to identify the vertex first, plot that point, and then from the vertex we can get that directrix line and focus points because of this fact that it's equidistant from the focus and the directrix. So here I have a little applet showing you um, just that relationship between the directrix and the focus line. And so if you notice if I drag that point along the parabola, that green line and the orange line end up being the same exact distance no matter where you drag it. And that's kind of a key part uh, on sketching the parabola is once you know where the vertex is, which is right, um, right here, um, once you know where the vertex is, then if we identify what's called the focal length, which is this distance from the vertex to the focus length, 
that is going to be the same distance as from the focus to the directrix line. So once we identify what's called the focal length, I abbreviate it as FL, um, once we know that, then we can just add or subtract that value either left or right of it or up or down to plot the focus and the directrix line itself. So here's a little bit of notes you want to write down, uh, have in your notebook, because remember you can use your notes on the exams here. Um, there's really two shapes of parabolas. One is the vertical parabola, which is upright or upside down. So it's kind of the ones we've seen in Algebra 2 classes. Um, and then we also have horizontal parabolas, where they, sh they kind of are either opening right or they might open uh, leftward. So it might be sideways parabolas that we can look at also. Um, but here's the first form of the vertical parabolas, that if it's vertical, and here's a good way to tell, is if you have an x squared term. Anytime there's an x squared term and there's a single y term, so not a y squared term, and you're going to have one or the other with these, uh, the times when you see both terms are squared is when we look at ellipses and circles. But one of the variables is going to be squared. Whatever the squared variable is, if it's x, it's going to be upright or upside down in um, upright parabola. If it is this shape, this is sort of the base form that we write our uh, parabola in. So you're going to see uh, today's lesson, all the graphing ones are going to be in that what we call standard form. Tomorrow, they're not going to be in standard form. So we're going to look at a process on how to get it to standard form. But then once it's the standard form, it's identifying those key things. That your vertex is h comma k. So if you look inside the parentheses, um, it's sort of opposite again what you think. So if you see x minus 3 squared equals, let's say, 4, and then y minus 2, or let's say plus 2 there, then that vertex point would be at, this is your x-coordinate because it's with the x variable, so it's going to be at positive 3 comma negative 2. It's always opposite inside the parentheses there. Your focus point, whatever the focal length is, which notice the coefficient in front, whatever that coefficient is in front, um, that represents four times the focal length. So, so to identify the focal length, really divide that coefficient, whatever's in front there, by four, and that's going to tell you the focal length. Once you know the focal length, in this case, we're just going to add it to our k value, and that's going to give us uh, the focus point itself. It's going to have the same x-coordinate. Um, and then the axis of symmetry, in this case, since it's a vertical parabola, um, the axis of symmetry is going to be a vertical line. And so remember, we describe any vertical lines as x equals. So whatever the x coordinate of the vertex is and the focus point is, that's going to be your axis of symmetry, and we write it as x equals. And so in our last case, it would have been x equals 3 would be your axis of symmetry there. And then the directrix line, since it's a vertical uh, parabola, then the directrix line itself is going to be horizontal. It's always perpendicular to the axis of symmetry. And remember, horizontal lines we write as y equals. And so whatever that focal length is, if you subtract it from your vertex point, um, the y value itself, that's going to give you that directrix line. And again, it's y equals whatever that number is. So in this example I wrote above, the focal length ends up being 1. And since my, because uh, I divide by 4, the focal length is 1. Since my y coordinate is negative 2, then I'm going to subtract uh, one from that and that gives me at negative three so my directrix line in this case would be at negative three here so again as mentioned before this is a big thing to remember that the focal uh, length itself is the distance from the vertex to the focus and it's also the distance from the vertex to the directrix line so that helps us plot a few things right away if you have a positive focal length so you see a positive coefficient in front then that means it's going to be opening up if you see a negative that means it flips down uh, remember, the focus is always inside the parabola, no matter how it is. So if it's flipped up, flipped upside down, um, the focus is in that parabola part. So one other thing that really helps us get a good, um, the actual shape of it itself from the parabola, because once you graph the focus, the vertex, the directrix line, the axis of symmetry, we have no idea how it's shaped. It could be super wide, it could be super narrow, um, we don't know. But this part right here, what's called the lattice rectum, that itself will actually help us um, show how wide or narrow the parabola actually is. And so whatever that um, coefficient in front of the parentheses there on the right-hand side, so if you remember, um, let's say we had x minus 3 squared equals, let's say, negative 8 and then y minus 2, something like this. 
um, whatever that coefficient is in front, the absolute value of that number is going to be the entire distance across through the focus point. And so the absolute value of negative 8 ends up being positive 8. So this entire distance here ends up being 8 units. And so what we can do is divide that by 2 and then from the focus point add 4 units this way, plot a point, add, subtract 4 units that way, plot a point, and then you have three points that you can now sketch the actual shape of the parabola through, including that vertex point itself. And so again, the lattice rectum is kind of the finishing touches to uh, making your sketch a little bit more appropriate to what the uh, equation given is. So for horizontals, very similar. Um, the way you know it's horizontals again is if you see a y squared term now. So if you have just a y squared term, right away you know it opens right or left. If the coefficient in front is negative, then that means it opens left. If it's positive, that means it's open right. Again, the focal length is still representing the same thing. It's still that distance between the vertex and focus, but now wherever your uh, vertex point is, you might have to add to the right to get your focus point and then subtract to the left to get your uh, directrix line. And so if you remember for vertical parabolas, we added up and subtracted down to get our focus and directrix line. Here it's going to be sideways, so we have to add to the right and add to the left. The vertex is still found by the same, so it's still h comma k. But now notice your focus is uh, really applied to uh, the x-coordinate itself. And so that's that idea of adding the focal length, like I just mentioned, to plot the focus point from the vertex. And then in this case, since it's a horizontal parabola, your axis of symmetry is now going to be horizontal. So we describe it as y equals whatever the y-coordinate is there. And then the directrix line is now going to be flipped. So the directrix line is going to be a uh, uh, vertical line. So we describe it as x equals. And again, we still use that lattice rectum to kind of polish up um, the parabola itself. But take time to, for sure, take notes on the standard form and all this um, notation things because before we graph, we're going to find all these things first. And then once we find them, uh, we're going to get a good sketch of it uh, by hand. But again, you can use your notes on the test, so make sure you have these down in your notes somewhere. All right, first example, and we're only going to go over a couple together before I have you try one. And then really, that's it for today's lesson, is just focusing on graphing these, getting used to it. So here we have a parabola in its standard form. Um, the reason I know what's standard form is I have some sets of parentheses here that are grouped by a squared term. And then notice uh, things are factored out on the right-hand side. The first thing you want to notice is sort of what type of shape this is going to look like. Since it's y squared, you have the bigger term is uh, uh, going to be the squared term there, which is y that is going to open either to the right or to the left since it's y squared. So it's going to be a horizontal parabola. And specifically, since this is a negative coefficient, I know right away that it's going to open up to the left. So it's going to look something like this. So keep that in the back of our mind. The vertex is always the easiest to identify right away. The vertex is always inside the parentheses there, but remember it's x comma y coordinates, and it's the opposite of what's inside the parentheses there. And so if I were to describe the vertex here, my x-coordinate is actually going to be opposite of that value. So it's going to be negative 1, comma, and then the y-coordinates with the y-value or the y-variable itself. And so that's going to be a positive 3. So let's plot that point first. So negative 1, 3, right there. There's our vertex. Since I know it opens to the left, then that means I'm going to subtract whatever the focal length is. Uh, from the vertex x-coordinate, and that's going to be my focus point. So remember the focal length is from that coefficient in front, negative 8. Negative 8 represents 4 times the focal length. And so if I divide by 4 here, my focal length ends up being negative 2. And that means I'm going to subtract 2 from the vertex, and it's going to be from the x-coordinate itself, and that's where my focus point's going to be. Because remember, the focus is always inside the parabola, so it's got to be to the left of the vertex there. Once I know my focus, I can also uh, do my directrix line. And so let's just write out the focus coordinate here first. But the focus coordinate would then be at, looking at the graph, that's at negative 3, 3. And so we got the focus point. Check. Axis of symmetry and directrix line. Um, so once you have the focus point and you know the focal length, 
then if I add two from the vertex this way, that's going to be where my directrix line is. And the directrix line, remember in this case, since it's opening up sideways, is going to be a vertical line. And so here's what the directrix line looks like. We signify that by kind of a dashed line. And to describe that as an equation, I would say my directrix would be at x equals, it looks like x equals 1 there. The axis of symmetry always goes through the focus and vertex point. And so if I draw a line through those two points, notice it's going to be a horizontal line here. And so the axis of symmetry, I'll label it as AOS. That is going to be y equals the y coordinate there of the vertex and focus point, which ends up being y equals 3. So we have basically everything here to graph. The only thing that's missing is sort of getting that rough shape because we don't know how narrow or how wide it is. That's when we go back to that coefficient again of negative 8. Remember that negative 8 there represents the lattice rectum. The absolute value of that is positive 8. That means from the focus point, remember the lattice rectum is always off the focus point, not the vertex. But from the focus point, if I add 4 above and subtract 4 below, that has a total distance of 8. And if I connect those three points, the two red points and then the vertex point there, then that gives me a better sense of how this parabola is shaped. And so just double checking, we got everything. We sketched the vertex, we got the axis of symmetry, we got the directrix line here, we, we sketched the focus point and labeled it. And then getting those other two points to kind of make sure we got the correct shape of it. Um, that's everything in graphing a parabola. So let's take a look at one more here before I have you guys try one on your own and check your answers there. Here we got a parabola. Again, it's in standard form. Um, like I said, tomorrow we'll look more at what it looks like to be not in standard form, so getting it into standard form first. Um, but let's identify these key things here. So remember, the first step is kind of getting an idea of what rough shape it's going to look like, because there's really four main shapes the parabolas could be. In this case, since we're dealing with x squared and the x-coordinate is squared, um, then that means that it's either going to be upright or it's going to be upside down. Now specifically, since the coefficient in front is negative, then I know for a fact that it's going to be upside down parabola. So let's keep that in the back of our mind. So the first step is identifying the vertex. And the vertex is always in the parentheses there. Um, remember it's with the x coordinate, so it's x comma y for vertex, and so looks like my x coordinate's going to be negative 1, and then my y coordinate would be positive 2. It's always the opposites there. So the vertex is at negative 1, 2, so let's plot that point. Negative 1, 2, right there. There's my vertex. The second step is plotting the focus point. Remember the focus point, we need the focal length first in order to identify the focus point. And so remember that coefficient in front, that negative 4, that represents 4 times the focal length. And so if I divide by 4, um, looks like my focal length ends up being negative 1. That means right away, and we can kind of graph a couple things at once here, but since it's opening downwards, then subtracting 1 unit away, that's going to be where my focus is, and then adding one unit above, that's where the directrix line is going to be, because remember they're equal distance. And so since it's uh, upside down, my directrix line in this case is going to be horizontal. So there's my directrix line, and that's at, looks like y equals positive 3 there. And then the focus point itself, I just subtracted 1 from the y-coordinate. has the same x-coordinate, so it's going to be at negative 1, comma, 1. The axis of symmetry, remember, always goes through the uh, vertex um, and the focus point itself. So if I draw a line through those two points, that ends up being my axis of symmetry. So axis of symmetry, in this case, is a vertical line. So we say x equals, and it looks like it's x equals negative 1 there is going to be the equation of that line. And so the last thing is to kind of polish off and get the uh, good shape of it of how narrow or how wide it is. And remember that also stems from that coefficient in front. The lattice rectum in this case, 
since the coefficient is negative 4, the lattice rectum ends up being positive 4. It's the absolute value. That means this whole distance from the vertex point here has to have a positive 4 distance. So that means if I add 2 this way and subtract 2 this way, then that whole distance uh, from the focus is going to be a total distance of 4. And if I connect my vertex with those other additional points that I just plotted from the lattice rectum, we get our shape of the parabola. So here's where I want you guys to try one on your own. So you can pause the video, um, look back on my last two examples if you're getting kind of stuck. Uh, but this is the last problem we're going to go over before I have you guys really practice five graphing ones on your own and submitting that formative assessment uh, before the end of the day. But try your best, pause the video, and we'll check our answers here in a few seconds. So good luck. So... Hopefully a lot of you recognize that since this is y squared this time, then it's going to be opening right or left. It's going to be a horizontal parabola. And since the coefficient in front there is positive, it's going to be opening to the right. So I know in the back of my mind my parabola should be right facing. Let's plot the vertex point. And so the vertex point in this case, um, remember the x coordinate is with the x, x parentheses there, so it's opposite, so it'd be 1, comma, and then the y coordinate looks like it's going to be negative 3. So you should have had a vertex at 1, negative 3. So there's my vertex point, check. The focal length, so since that's 24 in front, that represents four times the focal length there. And so if I divide by four, it looks like the focal length is six. So it looks like I might have to go slightly off the grid here to plot uh, the focus point itself. Um, so since the focus length is six, then in its opening right face, we've already uh, discussed that, then I'm gonna add six to the right, just slightly off the grid there. There's my focus point. And I'm gonna subtract six from the left because that's where my directrix line is going to be as a vertical line here. And so the focus point as a coordinate would still be at the same y coordinate, so negative three, but my new x coordinate, I'd add six from the x coordinate from before, so that makes it at seven there, so seven comma negative three. And then the directrix line looks like it's a vertical line, so we say x equals, and it looks like at x equals negative five there would be my directrix line. The axis of symmetry, remember, always goes through um, the focus and the vertex point. And so in this case, it's going to be a horizontal line. So axis of symmetry would be y equals, looks like negative 3 here. It's whatever that y coordinate is of the vertex and the focus point. And then lastly, getting the good shape of it. And this is going to be a little bit off the grid here for me because if you notice, 24 is a pretty big lattice rectum there. Um, positive 24 means from the focus point, I'd have to add 12. So 4, 8, whew, way off the grid here. Um, and then I've also have to add, looks like subtract 12 below. So 3, way down here somewhere. Um, so this is a lot, this is kind of harder one for me to graph because... That was a little bit off the grid for the lattice rectum and hopefully had a little bit more room with expanding your coordinate paper there. But that should be the rough shape of what the parabola looks like. And so we're only going to give you a few of these to try in your homework. And so notice it's just one through nine odd. So there's about five problems that you're going to graph by hand. So if you have graph paper, that's great. If not, you're going to have to set up your x comma y uh, axis and your tick marks there. Don't forget to label everything, so identify the vertex, focus, what the axis of symmetry, directrix line. You need those as an equations of lines uh, just to get a habit of providing all the information first uh, before you graph. And then don't forget to submit that formative assessment before the end of the day because I want to see some of your work after uh, day one of this. Good luck and enjoy the rest of your day.